Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. IRS announces 401k limit increase to $20,500. IR 2021-216, November 4th, 2021, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service announced today that the amount individuals can contribute to their 401k plans in 2022 has increased to $20,500, up from $19,500 for 2021 and 2020. The IRS today also issued technical guidance regarding all of the cost of living adjustments affecting dollar limitations for pension plans and other retirement related items for tax year 2021 in notice 2021 61. There's a link to that notice here posted today on the irs.gov, irs.gov, irs website. Highlights of changes for 2022, the contribution limit for employees who participate in 401k, 403b, most 457 plans, and the federal government's thrift saving plan is increased to $20,500, up from $19,500. The income ranges for determining eligibility to make deductible contributions to traditional Individual retirement arrangements, otherwise known as IRAs, IRAs, to contribute to Roth IRAs and to claim the saver's credit all increased for 2022. Taxpayers can deduct contributions to a traditional IRA if they meet certain conditions. If during the year either the taxpayer or the taxpayer spouse was covered by a retirement plan at work, the deduction may be reduced or phased out until it is eliminated depending on filing status and income. So that's where things get kind of confusing when you got basically multiple people in the same household with the retirement plan, married individuals, married couples. And then you have the question about the, how the IRA will fit in if you also have some other retirements, such as a 401k plan. And note that what you typically would want to do from a planning standpoint, generally, the ability to put money into a retirement plan is a huge type of deduction that you can get. But you only have the availability to it if you actually have the money that you can kind of put away for the retirement plan, meaning you don't need to spend it at this point in time. So what you'd like to do is during the year, generally max out your 401k, your 403b, the 457, as much as you can generally during, during the year, because you generally have to put the money in during the year. So in 2021, then you got to basically usually put the money in during the year to these types of plans in order for them to qualify for the year of 2021. And then you're, you're going to say, okay, now I'm going to actually file my tax return by April 15th, generally of 2022. And you can kind of ask the question at that point in time and have the support and help possibly of a tax professional and or software to determine if you could still put more in at that point in time with an IRA which can be kind of confusing if you also have a 401k plan and or a 403b plan and or your spouse has a 401k plan or 403b plan. So that's why it can be a little bit, it can be useful for the software to kind of help you out with that, that last kind of planning question. So if you have extra cash, it would be nice to have some cash left over so that when you do your last minute planning, which can be done at the last minute, literally, basically with the IRA calculation, because you can still put money typically into an IRA if you're able to, if you haven't hit any of the limits by the point in time that you that your tax return is due by April 15th. So then you can do that at the last at the last minute. So general again, you know, the general idea is to take advantage as much as possible of putting money into the employer provider plans, a 401k, 403b, and then and then if you still have the capacity to put more money in and you had the money, then look into whether or not you could still put money into an IRA with the help of software and a tax professional if you have the tax professional to determine how much you possibly could still put in by the point in time that you're going to file the tax return, which is after the year end, which could happen you know, by April 15th. That's kind of the general, the general idea you might want to think about with regards to putting money into these items. So, okay. So taxpayers can deduct contributions to a traditional IRA if they meet certain conditions. If during the year, either the taxpayer or the taxpayer spouse was covered by a retirement plan at work, the deduction may, may be reduced or phased out until it is eliminated depending on filing status and income. If neither the taxpayer nor the spouse is covered by the retirement plan at work, the phase outs uh, of the deduction do not apply. So here are the phase out ranges for 2022 for single taxpayers covered by the work 
place retirement plan, the phase out range is increased to 68,000 uh, to 78,000 up from 66,000 to 76,000. Let me say that one more time for single taxpayer covered by the workplace retirement plan. So you're a single tax player, you're covered by the retirement plan, 401k or something like that. The phase out range to possibly, we're talking about possibly being able to still put money into a normal IRA, phase out range is increased to the range being the low part of the range, 68,000 to 78,000. That was up from a range of 66,000 to 76,000. So for married couples filing jointly, if the spouse making the IRA contribution is covered by the workplace retirement plan, so now you have a situation, you've got two taxpayers married now, so that means one tax return, and now you're talking about the spouse that also has access to their 401k plan. So the phase out range uh, increased to 109,000 to, that's the bottom part of the range, to 129,000. That was up from the range of 105,000 to 125,000. For an IRA contribution who is not covered by a workplace retirement plan is married to someone who is covered. So now we're talking about a situation, you got a married couple, married filing joint, and now you're talking about the spouse that isn't themselves covered by a retirement plan, but their spouse is covered by a retirement plan. The phase out range is increased to 204,000, bottom of the range to 214,000, up from 198,000 to 208,000. For a married individual filing a separate return who's covered by a workplace retirement plan, the phase out range is not subject to an annual cost of living adjustment and remains zero to 10,000. So in other words, if you choose, if you're married and you choose to file married filing separate, the IRS is skeptical that you're doing that to take advantage of these kind of things. And they basically really lower the lower the range substantially in that instance. So you're, if this is substantial to you, you probably might be better off if you have the option to file married filing joint, which is often the case. So the income phase out range for taxpayers making contributions to a Roth IRA is increased to 129,000 to 144,000 for singles and heads of households up from 125,000 to 140,000 for married couples filing jointly the income phase out range is increased to 204,000 to 214,000 up from 198,000 to 208,000 obviously these ranges are quite complex they to just keep in your mind but the tax software can help you to, to, to do this, which is nice that when you think about the IRA contributions, you, you usually have up until the point in time that you file the return. And that will be after, you'll be thinking about that after the year end. So all the contributions to the 401ks have basically been done. And then you got that final piece that you can kind of think about uh, at, at, the, at the end uh, there. You can also use, of course, tax software to try to help you out with projections on those kind of on those kind of instances as well but you want to keep a general idea of these of these rules in in your mind and then possibly use software to help you to get the exact kind of phase outs that will be put in place so in any case the phase out range for a married individual filing a separate return who makes contributions to a Roth IRA is not subject to an annual cost of living adjustment and remains at zero to 10,000. So the income limit for the savers credit, also known as the retirement saving contribution credit for low and moderate income workers is $68,000 for married couples filing jointly up from $66,000, $51,000 for head of households up from $59,500 and $34,000 for singles and married individuals filing separately up from $33,000. The amount individuals can contribute to their simple as IMPLE retirement accounts is increased to 14,000 up from 13.5. Key employee contribution limits that remain unchanged. The limit on annual contributions to an IRA remains unchanged at $6,000. So you can still put $6,000 uh, annual into the IRA. The IRA catch up contribution limit for individuals. Uh, aged 50 over is not subject to annual cost of living adjustment and remains at $1,000 as well. The catch-up contribution limit for employees aged 50 and over who participate in 401k, 403b, or 4 457 plans and the federal government's thrift saving plan remains unchanged at $6,500. Therefore, participants in 401k, 403b, most 457 plans and the federal government thrift saving plan 
who are age 50 and older can contribute up to $27,000 starting in 2022. The catch-up contribution limit for employees aged 50 and over who participate in the simple SIMPLE small business type of plan typically plans remains unchanged at 3000 Details on these and other retirement-related cost-of-living adjustments for 2022 are in Notice 2021-61. There's a link to that here. It's available on irs.gov. There'll be a link to this in the description.